Welcome to Average Joe's Sports Show. Today, I'm here with Trey. No Colton today, but it's fine because Colton did a show with Trey. Now it's my turn. <laughs> so we're just, this is just kind of like a, we're a breaking news kind of thing, kind of like a little 10 minute segment of trying to just fit some things in that we don't really get to in our main show that would, we would just like to talk about in general. So to start off, one of the most blockbuster trades this season, last 10 years, last 20 years maybe, Devontae Adams going to the Los Angeles or the Las Vegas Raiders for a first and a second round pick. And I'm pretty sure it was the 22nd overall pick and the 53rd overall pick. Two, I mean, that's a, that's a, a first round pick is a first round pick. Like that's, it's going to, I think it, it's going to be good at least. A second round pick is also good. I, I feel like they could have got maybe a little bit I, more. I definitely think they could. Like, the only reason it's Devontae I, Adams. The only reason I don't think they would have got more is because he was asking for a long-term deal. And if he wasn't, then I think they would have got a lot more than that. I think that, I think that there would have been a lot more people trying to go for him if he was just wanting to do a shorter-term deal. Because, I mean, if you're paying him, how he, he wanted to get paid like 30 mil a year, which yeah. was – easily clearing the wide receiver market ever of the most uh, paid wide receiver ever. But I think a team would want to do that, like the Packers. The Packers would probably sign them maybe like a two-year, like $60 million deal. Supposedly they did offer him more money, but he chose to go over to the Raiders instead of being... Maybe, the maybe the Raiders are... I mean, maybe he just wants a fresh start. And maybe he wants to prove to people that he doesn't Rogers. need Rodgers. Yeah. Personally, I think that, listen, he's, he is the best wide receiver in the NFL right now, I think, personally. But at the same time, it's like, how much of that was Aaron Rodgers? And how much of that was him actually, honestly, getting better and turning out to the be, uh, being a receiver he is today? But, I mean, I think... Honestly, I think a lot of it is him actually coming all along as his own as a number one wide receiver getting open that much. I mean, if you're going to get open that much, he's going to see he you like it's Aaron Rodgers. Him off the ball, off the line, I mean, is he's easily the best at, off of his release. He really yeah. is. Off of, like, but Jalen what, Ramsey and all that, he did amazing. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he's going to go up against the best corner on the, on the team, and he's going to manhandle them for 60 minutes, unless it's Xavier Howard. But... Yeah. What does this do for the wide receiver market, the market in general, but more specifically the wide receiver market for players like, I'm trying to think if somebody's coming up with a deal soon, Debo Samuel, Debo, uh, there's, Cooper Cup. Didn't Cooper Cup sign an extension last year? Well, what? I'm talking about like for, the, oh, for the future. Yeah. But yeah. DK is also has another DK, one. DK is coming up. And DK, I think, will, and DK will be a top 10 wide receiver. Just in general, like, uh, for like another one, Juju Smith-Schuster, he's a free agent right now, trying to look for a team, and then he sees Devonte Adams getting 28 mil a year. Obviously, he's not on the same level uh, as Devonte so. Adams, but I think we all have seen he had, he had 1,400 yards his second season, I'm pretty sure, and he's 25. He's 25 years old. He is a, a, a physical playmaker with. He, with very technical short routes, and he can get he can he can get open. He can catch a ball. He can make people miss. But I think above anything is his toughness, and I think that stands out to me the most. Even though he he's no he he's almost getting he got like known for getting smacked <laughs> by uh, Von, Bell. Von Bell. But even before that, he was popular, <laughs> and he was. It's not even like he was popular just because he was dancing. Like, he's dancing and then getting 1,400 yards. Like, that's just crazy. And for a player like Debo Samuel, Debo had 1,770 yards Debo last season. Debo plays a lot like a Cordell Patterson role, which I think will soon be, like, a major part to most offenses. I think it's a strong position to be, to, like, be able to catch the ball and run. Yeah, it's like, like it's crazy. It's like what it's like they're doing the same things except Cordell's older. Uh, he's an older guy. Yeah, he's older. But I feel like Cordell's mainly more of a running back now. Yeah. 
And Debo is obviously way more of a receiver, but a, a very, he's like a, a really, really good juju, I guess. <laughs> but like, I don't know. D, he's his own player. I'm not even gonna classify him as anything. He's his own player. If you have, he had 136 touches last season for 1,770 yards. And um, I think he had, he had double digit touchdowns. I think he for had sure. uh, 13. But that's just crazy. What is his contract going to look like, especially with all those superstars around him? Yeah. And that the team, I mean, it's crazy. But let's go into the AFC West because oh, everything is shrinking through the AFC West right now. And, man, I think if you're a Chiefs fan right now, what is going through your mind? Because you have to sit there and you're looking at your defense. Man, you have to go up against the Chargers. Now you have to go against Adams and Carr and Darren Waller. Like, and Renfro. You, it, it, you have to go against some crazy That's a, people. That is a those, – those are threats. The number – the probably the number one wide receiver, top, uh, three, top tight three tight end, when healthy, and right. a top 15 receiver. I'm going to give him top 15 easily. I don't think he's top 10. I don't think he's bottom – Keenan Allen or Mike Williams? I'm talking about uh, Renfro. Oh, Renfro. You're putting Renfro all the way up there? I was talking, yeah, he, I think he's top 15. Oh, that's really high for Renfro. But I don't think, I, don't, I think he's, he's in between 10 and he's like right around 15. I used to say he's top 20 for sure, but he's, he is really good. He's a good yeah. gadget guy, I think. Um, but the, the Chargers getting Khalil Mack, JC Jackson, and already having Joey Bosa and Derwin James coming off of a Defensive Player of the Year kind of season off of, and coming off of an injury. That, that re- re-signing Mike Williams, the Chargers are, are on it this yeah, offseason. Sure. And it's not even like they're in a win-now situation. But in a few years, they're going to be, that's, that's they're gonna gonna be, be that division scrapping right now. for money. Justin Herbert's going to get a huge... Huge deal. Big, yeah, for sure. Keenan Allen, I think, will get an, uh, a deal, but I, don't, I think it'll be a lot smaller. Yeah, he's, he's like 20. I think he's 28. He's, um, I want to say he's 28 because I think he's the same age as Robinson, Allen Robinson. Yeah, Allen Robinson's 28. Uh, he's 29. Oh. He's 29. He might get like a one or two year deal, but I mean, Mike Williams has already signed. Herbert's on a rookie contract for. Two more years. Three if you count as fifth-year option. But Three. That, actually, fifth-year options, you get a lot of money for, as a quarterback. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Lamar Jackson had his fifth-year option exercised. Yeah. So I think he honestly might do the same thing. But Herbert's going to get a huge contract. J.C. Jackson's probably going to want to get a huge contract after this one's up. That was like, man, they got to steal with Derwin James is going to be needing a contract. Joey Bosa is going to be needing, like that's just so many. They, that's they just so many players already. For money for sure, but I mean, and still you got to look at the age of all these players. Like, honestly, because um, oh, when does I want to say Keenan Allen's contract runs out around Justin Herbert's, and like if you're going to pick one, you're obviously picking Justin Herbert. Yeah. Obviously, and then when you're looking at a veteran guy, you'll already have Mike Williams still locked up, I think, because he's a huge threat to anybody catches the ball. Amazingly, he catches all the passes, and then, but like, you'll always be drafting. So you're getting you're, you're getting younger talent, and you just want the veteran guys on cheap deals, which I think is what they'll have to do eventually. Like, I honestly think they are winning right now. That's the that's the thing. You got to win before you give Justin Herbert that deal. And I think they uh, they're they're trying to. I don't want to say like win now, but it's like they're signing like they signed a veteran on defense, and I don't know. I don't think they're I don't think they're in a, a win now situation. I think they still have time, but I think that this is going to be the best team that they have for a minute. So yeah, right. I can kind of consider it a win now. Now I think about it really, because I mean, I mean they signed. They're not going to have all these players. Mac. They're not going to have all these players for long, but. Yeah. They only have like two years on Cleo Max deal, and I, it's still that's a big deal still. Yeah, and uh, like, it's if you're gonna get him, then you're winning now. It's the same with the Bills and Von Miller. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, if even you though you got signed guy, to a six-year deal, six-year deal, and he's aging already. I mean, mm-hmm. that's they're winning now. They want to win mm-hmm. now. Already in a tough AFC. Yeah, but um, speaking about Khalil Mack, what about the Bears and Larry Ogunjobi not even being able to be on the team because oh, of a failed physical, physical, which. I don't know. I don't know how he failed the physical. I don't know. I don't know if he failed the physical, like actually, like running, like physically, like he didn't like physically look good, or if there's like something wrong with him. But I mean, hopefully he finds a, a he new did get team. An ankle, an ankle, an ankle injury before the Bengals playoff run. I think that's that has to play a role in it. I think. Yeah, but I think that. He's going to find a new. He's going to find a new so place, too. but the Bears. That was bad for them. Not like terrible. Not like super anything like terrible. But like, it was just kind of bad because that was. It's definitely something they needed. A start. It was. It was a start of something. Like after you get rid of Khalil Mack, you want to at least try to bring back a little bit of something to rejuvenate that line. Yeah. Larry Ogunjobi was honestly a, a, a stud when he played for Cleveland, and he was not even that bad on the Bengals. He was actually pretty decent on the Bengals. So he would have been, I don't know about a difference maker, but he would have been, um, he would have been a, a standout on the Bears' defense in general. And I think he'll make an impact on whatever team he goes to. Hopefully... He passes his physical, but whatever goes. I definitely don't think he's getting the contract that the Bears offered him either. There's no way he's getting $40 million after that. No. No way. No, there's no way. But what do you think about the Bears in the NFC North right now, seeing as Devontae Adams left and you guys don't have Khalil Mack anymore? If, man. Um, That's too... I don't top dogs of that division. I really want them to trade Robert Quinn right now, mainly because there's no way his value goes any higher than what he has mm-hmm. right now. I think you I, get a I third agree. and fifth round pick for Robert Quinn. Maybe even a, a late second and you giving away a pick as well. But like, you got to trade him, man. Like, We are obviously rebuilding. Mm-hmm. I think so anyways. But the, And the thing that sucks about that is because Rebuilding takes time, and time is one thing the Bears don't really have because you want to win a Super Bowl with your quarterback on a rookie deal, I think. Because as soon as he gets to that contract, you have to really limit your player signings and who you're going to get. You really, you really, I don't want to say it puts a, puts a wrench in things because it's like you're already, if you, ha- if you have to sign your quarterback, like that should yeah. be a good thing. Yeah. Like he's, he's playing good. He's playing to the potential that you were wanting to play him to. But yeah, I do also agree that you have to be a lot more smarter than with who you pick up, who you get rid of, and who you sign as coaches too, honestly. Because the coaching, Coaching a quarterback goes a lot into it too, and players in general. Like if if the players don't have a coach that they like, then they're not gonna want to play there. So, really, a quarterback throws a huge wrench into things. But at the same time, you have a quarterback, and every team needs a quarterback, and a quarterback is the most important position I think in sports. So for sure, we're gonna wrap it up with Average Joe Sports Show today. Thank you for tuning in. This is me and Trey. We're out. Green 18! Green 18!